exchange this gift from God. It should be pointed out that though Luther agreed that the merits of Christ were the sole basis of a man's justification, and it did not depend in any way on a man's deeds, he thought that a man could still lose his justification if he totally turned away from Christ. Since God's gift of forgiveness of sins and eternal life was appropriated by faith, if a man decided not to rest his eternal destiny in Christ and totally turned against him, only then would a man lose his salvation. In other words, the only sin that Luther felt would cause a man to lose his salvation was the sin of apostasy. Now, on the other hand, Calvin taught that once God justified a man, God would strengthen that man's faith and protect him so that he would never want to turn away from believing in the work of Christ on his behalf. Five across from the Protestant position of can't lose it is Roman Catholicism's position, you can lose it. Catholicism believes that justification can be destroyed. That is, justifying grace within a man can be obliterated by his committing mortal sin. Roman Catholicism distinguishes between venial sins, sins that are not so serious that they involve the destruction of justifying grace, with mortal sins, which are sins so serious that the grace of justification can be destroyed within man. If a man commits mortal sin and destroys his justification, in order for him to regain it, Catholicism teaches he must come via the sacrament of penance, which involves confession, absolution, and satisfaction. Catholics do believe in Christ, but are reminded that their justification also depends on their works cooperating with Christ. A man cannot know his own heart, so being subject to many temptations, he may commit a variety of mortal sins, any one of which could destroy his justification. That's why the Council of Trent stated, Each one, when he regards himself in his own weakness and indisposition, may have fear and apprehension touching his own grace seeing that no one can know with a certainty of faith, which cannot be subject to error, that he has obtained the grace of God. So for Catholicism, a man can lose his justification and can't be sure he will someday be in heaven. You know, it, again, you know, like, like uh, 1 John 5 makes a distinction in different kinds of sin. But if one commits serious sin, one can cut oneself off from Christ and, you know, thereby lose one's justification. All right, let me ask you, is all this making sense? I hope that you're sticking with me now. Finally, we come to number six. Under number six, representing the views of Protestants, are the famous words, by faith alone. For Protestants, faith is not just intellectual assent to certain facts about Christ's salvation. Rather, faith is a knowledge of the facts, plus a total commitment or trust and reliance on Jesus Christ who is the sole reason and grounds upon which God justifies us. For Protestants, justification is an act that can take place in a single moment, the moment the sinner, through faith, trusts Christ completely. At that moment, the benefits of Christ are applied to his life, and he is judged or declared by God to stand in his sight as righteous. Faith is not a meritorious work that God looks at as the reason or the basis for a person's justification. Rather, faith is only the instrument which allows someone to reach out to Christ, who is the sole reason and grounds upon which God justifies. Now, six across from faith alone is Catholicism's belief that justification is by faith plus works. For Catholicism, faith is required but they object to saying that faith alone is all that is required for a person to be justified. Catholicism requires, in addition to faith, works. But at the same time, as St. James says, faith alone is not enough. Faith without good works is insufficient because the justification that the Catholic Church talks about is not, as Luther taught, merely imputed. The dispute centers on some key passages in the New Testament most notably the third and fourth chapters of Romans and the second chapter of the epistle of James. Let's look at these passages right now. Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 28, says, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Protestants believe that since Paul says that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law, then one can only conclude justification must be by faith alone. 
There are no other options. Further, the apostle goes on building his case by giving an historical example in Romans chapter 4 where he appeals to the case of Abraham. It begins, For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned, here's that word counted or imputed, it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, his wage is not reckoned as a favor, but as what is due. But to the one who does not work, but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, notice, according to Paul, God justifies the ungodly, not the ones that are righteous within. His faith is reckoned as righteousness. Now, the point is that what Paul is very clearly saying here is that when Abraham believed God, that was the time of his justification. Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God, and he was justified by divine declaration apart from works. So here in chapter 4, the Apostle Paul links the statement from chapter 3, we are justified by faith apart from the works of the law with the historical situation of Abraham to prove his case that a man is declared justified by God the moment he believes. Paul labors the point that it is by faith alone in Christ and nothing of man's works that is the basis of God's justifying a man. Now, how does the Roman Catholic Church deal with this? Well, they counter this concept of justification by faith alone with an appeal to James chapter 2, verse 24. It reads, You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Now Roman Catholic scholars say to Protestants, Can the Bible make it any clearer? Here you are going around teaching that justification is by faith alone, and yet we have a statement right from the Apostle James that says, quote, you see then that justification is by works and not by faith alone. And what's more, not only does James say that justification is by works and not by faith alone, but he appeals to Abraham to prove his point, the very historical figure that the Apostle Paul appealed to in his stating his case of justification by faith in Romans 4. Now, does this mean we have an irreconcilable contradiction between the two apostles? Are they teaching different doctrines? Well, this is the point that we're going to discuss in the debate starting next week. Instead of explaining it all, I want you to hear how the men approach this. Roman Catholicism, Issues and Evidences, is a... Catholics and Protestants agree that the merits of Christ are necessary for a man to receive justification. But where Catholics and Protestants disagree is how do the merits of Christ become mine? Catholicism teaches that there is a preparation of the sinner before he can be justified. Then there is the moment of baptism when justification itself takes place, followed by a lifetime of becoming more justified. The preparation before justification begins with God, who gives prevenient grace. This prevenient grace, also called sanctifying grace, or the habitus of grace, is a power God infuses into the 